Hello and welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. I'm Binky B, and this will be another cube draft. Uh, we got some choices here. We have a Garruk, which is pretty nice, uh, but I think Green Monolith is just straight up better. Then we have Parallax Wave, some lands, Electrolyze, and Hymn. And I'm kind of tempted to take Hymn just to do something different. I think Green Monolith is the correct pick, but I'm gonna pick him to Torok. I mean, it's a fantastic card, and out of this pack, we might will pollute the Delta, but probably not. But I'm gonna try to go very black here. Sinkhole, Bitter Blossom, if we wanna stay black, or Night Vale Spectre. Other powerful cards, Tamio. Yeah, some other stuff. And the Earth Judgment. I think you want to pick Bitter Blossom. Sinkhole is really good, but I think it might wheel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 a.m. It might wheel. But Bitter Blossom is actually pretty nice. I haven't actually played Bitter Blossom in a cube. Yeah, I have once, but it was a splash and not very, very exciting. That draft didn't really end up well, let's just say that. But Bitter Blossom is a very powerful card. Now we might splash blue for a fire or two, you never know. So we got a Man of War, Thran Dynamo, and a Blood Soaked Champion. I think you will pick the Champion. He's actually decent and uh, I'm looking to be kind of ag aggressive here, so if we were to pick like uh, the monolith in the last pack, I would probably pick like Tammy or something. Here I might have picked Thrand Dynamo or uh, Master of the Wildland, but Blood of Champion fits this text strategy pretty well. I don't think Mono Black is that fantastic, but it's fun to do something else than uh, blue based control and stuff. Now this is an interesting pick. We can take Damnation and go a more controlly route. Or we can pick Diagraph Ghoul and be more aggressive. We can also branch out and pick Olivia or Magma Jet or something else. I'm leaning towards the Damnation because it's pretty good with Beta Blossom and Blood Soak Champion. Uh, will Diagraph Ghoul wheel? One. Two, three, four, five, six. Maybe it's the only black card, but I think you'll pick Damnation here. It is a pretty odd effect to have out of a uh, kind of aggressive deck, but usually it's pretty good. Dark Confident seems to be my pick without looking any further. Blue Cross is good, Grim Lava Monster is good, a couple of lands, Trading Rider, and Unworld Connections would have been perfect. But our confident is my pick. Now I'm leaning back to being more aggressive. I would need something to regain me some life. Like uh, corrupt or one of the ten rails or something to mitigate the life loss from Dark Confident and Bitter Blossom. It would be pretty horrible to flip a damnation and then play a beer blossom and yeah. My life would decrease very rapidly. Alright, so we have Molten Tail Master Core. We have a Cuckoo Show. Uh, if we're playing that, I'm probably not playing Dark Confident. We got a Temple and an Inquisition, and I think I will pick Inquisition. It seems to fit this deck's strategy pretty well. Not certain I will play Dam Damnation, but it's a good card to have access to. It all depends on how the rest of the packs turn out. I think there you could have justified picking Kakusha and removing Dark Confident, but we'll see. We have a Worn Power Stone, which is decent. Crafted War Gear is pretty good. Flametongue Kavu, Chromox. 
We have a Soren Markov. He is pretty underwhelming, I have to say. Do we want the Mox Opo? Oh, Chrome Mox, I mean. Don't think so. I think I'd rather pick the black white land out of this pack. Not sure I will splash black, but maybe Armageddon. That is an interesting card to have access to. Now maybe Dark Confidant won't be played anymore, but if we can control them, land a bitter blossom and then burn all the lands, that's pretty good. Slaughter pack is replaceable, Night Howler is not fantastic. The only other card is Sphere of the Suns. So I'll pick Armageddon here. <sighs> yeah, even though Dark Confident is very good, I'm not sure I will play him, but we can have another human effect if we want to, or a Carnophage. I think I'll pick the Carnophage. So Sinkhole and Night Veil Spectre Wheel. Which one do I want? Destroy lands with Armageddon is pretty good. It's pretty good overall. Will I miss the Nightwell Spectre? Probably not. I'll pick the sinkhole. Here I can't see myself playing any of the cards, but I guess Absent is most likely. Sure, I'll pick the Diagraph Ghoul now. Of those cards, I think we will remove Grim Lavanancer. Look at the tempo, might even play it, you never know. Alright, so an interesting start. I'm still a bit uncertain of uh, their confidence, but I guess if I can attack their hand and then blow their lands, refilling your own hand is not horrible even if it costs a few life this deck seems pretty bad against a red aggressive deck though with burn what I really need is cards like corrupt and stuff and then maybe dark confidant won't be played we will see so we got bone splitter thoughts is Consecrated Sphinx and Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Do I want the Bone Splitter? I actually think I do. Thoughts this is good and all, but Bone Splitter with Bitter Blossom tokens seems pretty nice. Could also pick Shadow Mage or uh, Consecrated Sphinx. Oh, that's really. Jeez, mm, the Mind Sculptor. Which just happens to be one of the best reasons to go blue black. So let's see, if I don't take Jace, there's no white cards that I'm even considering here. And there is really no black cards. I mean, Mesmeric Fiend works, and Go for the Throat works. So I think it's between Mutawalt or Jace. And I think you could defend either one. Alright, I'm gonna stick to the plan and try to be black. Bad Moon will most likely wheel. There is two cards in black that are better than Bad Moon if you're not mono black. Let's see, we could pick a Cursed Scroll. This is one of the times where it's really horrible because if I pick, let's say Curse Scroll, which I think would be pretty good in this deck, and then Bad Moon doesn't wheel, then I would be really sad because I think Bad Moon will be pretty good in this deck. But on the other hand, if I pick Bad Moon, nothing here will wheel. Maybe the Disciple, I guess. I'll pick the Bad Moon. It's too bad for me if it doesn't wheel. Desecration Demon and nothing really. Yeah, that's a pretty nice pickup. Standalone threat. The 
it doesn't really need bad moon but yeah Nantuka shade and red return and a marsh flats let's see one two three four five three cards will wheel and it will be I'm not sure if Nantuka shade will wheel do we need the marsh flats? I think if we want to play Armageddon, we need it. But then Tuka Shed is so good. Alright. There is a profane command that I was thinking about earlier. Maybe we want that. Is it better than the Visara? Yeah. So this is a fireball. Reanimate, removal, and a falter. I think it's pretty good here, and it's decent with our confidant since it only costs two, or it's converted mana cost is two. Wouldn't mind picking up more disruption, like a vindicate would be ideal. Solemn or pains here? Solem. Soren, I mean, obviously, Solem Visitor. Getting kind of crowded on four. And Painser is pretty good, but I do want one of those. I might move Damnation to the board now. What I really want that for is um, for Xenobly Traitor. He is one of the biggest payoffs for a deck like this. Otherwise, we're basically playing bad bears and uh, some decent spells like him. Does he make black creatures? Yes, it's pretty good. So, what do we really want? If we could pick any card, I still think we indicate. Uh, Godless Shrine would be decent too. Can we get our pick? There we go. Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Saturday Necromancer is also pretty good. But I don't think we have that many humans. Tide of the Scholar also very good, but I'm gonna pick the Nighthawk. If it's the curve, gives me life. He seems like he's made for this deck. I don't need more life loss. Either I pick a seal of cleansing for a potential sideboard option or shadow mage. Maybe look into abandon my two white cards to go more blue. But I don't think it's worth it. I rarely play mono black or in this case black with a tiny white splash but I really think Armageddon is worth the risk. Smirk Fiend wheel I'm gonna play it and be happy about that. Can move my lands to the board. So eight creatures but we secretly have nine ten so we're looking good at the creature creature department curse scroll wheeling yeah and we don't need this enchant effects curse scroll is pretty nice here we'll pick Tectonic Edge, I think. I think we can play two colorless lands. Curse Scroll in this deck, I think, does a lot of work because we might need the. It's both a recurring removal and somewhat reach like. I mean, it's not much, but. If we have them on a couple of life and they are stabilized, it's 
not horrible to be able to curve scroll every turn. And here was something that I hoped would wheel. I think this is where we picked the bad moon. Pretty sure. I think it was no, it was the Marsh Flats pack. I'm not exactly sure what we took over it. It might have been a b the bad moon. It's not that interesting to pick up the Marsh Flats if uh, Mono White could have been an option. It's not that interesting to pick up the Marsh Flats if we don't have a God of Shrine or uh, another duel. Playing one planes in this deck is not that great, but we might have to do it. Alright, let's see, we have a top, Seed of Brass, Lifebrain Zombie and Chainless Edict. Top is not horrible with Dark Confident. I'm actually gonna pick Sensei's Divine in top, but I, I don't like the card, but I think it will do pretty well in this deck. Setting up the Dark Confident. Making sure that we find lands post Armageddon. Yeah, I think it will do. It will do well. We still don't have to play white if we don't think that we will get there. Uh, Bones Blue still has 10 creatures to work with. I think that's a bit low but acceptable. Mainly because Bitter Blossom keeps producing creatures. Alright, looks like we are taking another equipment here. And it's not even close by any stretch. Terminus would have been kind of fun, and we do need some kind of removal soon, but. Yeah. Alright, let's see. We got Winter Orb, Hero's Downfall, Brain Maggot, and the Swords to Plowshares. I'm gonna pick the Hero's Downfall. It's expensive, but we need effect. Hmm. There we got a decent removal. We also got Ancient Tube, Coalition Relic, and Grave Crawler. Don't think we can take the relic. How many zombies do we have? One, two. Two. No, that's not enough. Ancient tomb powers out not that much. Could pick up show and tell, but I don't think that's worth it. I'm gonna pick the tendrils. It's expensive, but it's kind of what I want in this deck. Here we got a Tangle Wire, Herald of Torment. That's basically it. Do I want Tangle Wire? I don't pick the Herald of Torment. It's a pretty good standalone threat. So the deck is shaping up first, if we're not playing white, those cards are going first obviously, and if we are playing white, I think Bone Splitter is the first card to go. Maybe Sinkhole too, because we're not like a land destruction deck, we have an Armageddon. But if I'm gonna play white, I kinda need to uh, find one land. It doesn't feel correct to splash two white cards in a mono black deck with one isolated chapel. Let's see. Another Soren. A Hall of Triumph and a Vampire Hex Mage. Now this is interesting. 
I don't think I can take the Sorin. So I'm leaning towards Hex Mage or Hall of Triumph. Hall of Triumph together with Blood Moon is pretty nice. But we have so few creatures that I think Vampire Hex Mage is my pick. And that will remove the Bone Splitter for now. There we have the Godless Shrine, and I'm pretty forced to take it. Sarcomancy is good. Living Death is alright. But this is easily Godless Shrine. And now we can play our white cards. I would have liked that Marsh Flats now, but now I can't play the white cards. Another Armageddon! That is interesting. We have Knight's Whisper, how many card advantage sources do we have? Like, a half, one and a half. Two, three. I don't think we need Night Whispers. I would like the Knight of Infamy, but another Armageddon seems so good. So what are we removing now? We are removing Sinkhole. Why removing land destruction if you're gonna play pick up a land destruction well? Well, those is kind of a blowout, where Sinkhole is just a temper swing, basically. Kinda like this deck, I think we can do pretty well. We're a bit heavy at 4, for my taste. Shainer Sadiq came around, and it's exactly the card that I wanted. Now we need to cut cards. And I think, I think I don't know. Feels like it's one of the fours. Could be tenders of corruption. Probably is. We're losing life from Beer Blossom and Dark Confident. And Earl of Torment. We're gaining by Nighthawk, so Sorin. I think that might work. Do we want this figure or Spiteful Returned? I think we need the disfigure actually, but I'm gonna put it in the board. As removal, we have Curse Scroll, Inquisition, GTA, Profane Command, Shainus Edict, Downfall. I think we can start it in the board, but. It's a good one to have when we're facing something really aggressive or where the Armageddons might be bad or something. We got the like Nutser Crusade and the uh, Hallowed Spirit Keeper. I guess we could be playing 16 lands too. Our deck is pretty cheap. But now we need 17 lands for sure, we have Armageddon's. So the average damage we'll take from Dark Confident is probably. Oh, do we want Winter Orb or Brain Maggot? I think Brain Maggot. Uh, where was I? I was thinking of something. Yeah, Dark Confident. Uh, it should be a land spell basically each and every turn, so somewhere around 1 or 2 to 2 damage. Do we take the land or show and tell? Or Stump Howler? Should pick the show and tell. 
too bad when those cards get around. Uh, don't have to give away more one drops. Soaring Wield, it's pretty nice. I think we'll play him. Do we remove the Desecration Demon then? Or do we remove this Soaring? I think it's one of the four. So it's one of the Soarings or... Uh, one of the Soarings or... Uh, the Desecration Demon. The demon is nice because it can just win the match by itself, no problem. And the Soarings are good because they are a, d a different kind of threat. The new one makes better creatures and it's plus one is good when you have other creatures, which I probably will. This one is better because it makes lifelink creatures. Is it correct to cut a Soarin? I think so, and I'm gonna pick Soarin Lord of Innistrad for my sideboard. I think if we can go like a creature and a bit of blossom into Soarin, uh, the plus one will be really good. So we have some hand disruption, got a decent equipment, some removal, four Armageddons. Two Armageddons. And how will our land base be? Not fantastic. 15 2. And we have a Goddess Shrine to replace a Plains, an Isolated Chapel to replace a Swamp, a Mutable to replace a Swamp. I don't think we'll start the Tech Edge. This gives us three white sources for three white spells. But they're all expensive and we have a divining top to dig to them. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna see you shortly for game one. <laughs> 